are you fans this team just keeps on winning they just keep chugging along they just keep rolling through quality big 10 teams there was one minnesota in there but that was your sear roseman coach there isn't a nebraska in here indiana's not beating up on the bottom of the big 10 the hoosiers walked into ann arbor on saturday and came away with a 62 61 win potentially driving the dagger into Michigan's NCAA tournament hopes. The Hoosiers see themselves second place in the Big Ten. And things are looking pretty great in Hoosier Nation. But as we all know, things can change. All it takes is one bad game. All it takes is a rough week in the conference. And Indiana's got two more massive matchups coming up. And we're going to bring you previews of those two games, our immediate reactions, from IU's win over Michigan, and so much more here on episode 284 of the Hoosier Sound, where we are the official podcast of Indiana HQ. We're recording this edition of the Hoosier Sound on Monday, February 13th, 2023, where I am your host, Nathan Christian. Here with me tonight are my normal co-host, Matt Lukens, and our boots on the ground, Indiana HQ contributor, Charlie Mason. Charlie, You are the person who's going to assembly all for us, covering this team. The Hoosiers record a huge win over Purdue, a huge win over Rutgers. They go to Michigan and grab another victory. What is the vibe like on campus right now with this team? And what are your main takeaways as far as I use hot stretch recently? I will say, um, coming back from winter break, I don't think a lot of people uh, had hope. In this team, I think uh, there was there were talks, murmurs about not even making the tournament, uh, the March Madness tournament. Um, I think that has completely gone away. Any doubt uh, of Hoover of Hoosier Nation has completely disappeared. Assembly Hall is more alive than I've ever seen it. Uh, I was at the Purdue game and it was ridiculous. He couldn't hear anybody. It was it was probably more the fans were more aggressive and more into it than uh, than UNC for sure. Um, but I think this turnaround has just been incredible. Um, uh, the ability to win on the road, too, is something that maybe the students here on campus and fans of, in Bloomington don't really see as much of. Um, but it's just as big. It, it plays just as big of a part uh, into that number 14 ranking um, that IU was handed today. So yeah. number 14 overall, the Hoosiers, 18 and 7, 9 and 5 in Big Ten play. Matt. I know you watched every minute of that game on Saturday. It didn't look all that great for the Hoosiers. It really didn't. But I guess the hallmark of a great team is one that wins even when things don't go well. And that's exactly what IU did on Saturday. The funniest thing in the world to me is, is I, we got on this podcast about ooh, two, three weeks ago. Nah, yeah. Probably about a month ago at this point. Yep. About a month ago. And we had a doomsday podcast. Remember it was rough. Time? It was rough. It was bad. Um. And and I said something to to the tune of IU needs to get to ten wins in conference. Well, they're just sitting keep, at they're just sitting, keep splitting. That's just that was keep our splitting. Motto. That just was keep split, splitting. Yeah, our weeks. that was our that was our my motto. I was like, just keep splitting games and you'll be fine. And uh, we've won like you know five out of the last eight of uh, nine. Six. Eight of nine. Eight of nine since that podcast. Yeah, five of six since the podcast. I said where we just yeah. keep splitting. Be fine. And and now we're sitting here at nine wins, and and the the complexion of the season has con- entirely changed. Um, again, it was more of hold on and kind of survive until until we get our guys back. To now, what is the ceiling of this team when the guys come back? Right, because this team is now winning games in conference, going on the road and stealing games from from decent teams, um, and, and absolutely playing and executing at a high level at home. Um, and, and some people have ranked it, you know, in their power rankings as a, you know, a top 10 team. Some people have IU as a two seed in their bracket projections. Yeah, yeah. Like it, the, the script has been completely flipped on its head, um, since about a month ago. It's incredible. Um, it's it's and, unbelievable. Yeah. And there's been some twists and turns. You had Mike Woodson not coaching for, for a game you've had, Race Thompson is randomly out yeah. with an injury again. And, you know, Xavier Johnson, we thought would, we would have back. He's still not back. Uh, Jalen hood Shafino gets banged up in one game, still st- plays, ends up having one of his best games. Who's for the next game? Yeah. It's like when when you just think the, the roller coaster is going to go off the tracks, when you think that something just can't possibly happen for this team, they somehow pull it out. 
And then they lay an egg at Maryland. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure I don't need to describe the ups and downs to Hoosier Nation. I'm sure you guys all understand this, but I do think that there needs to be a step back and take the bigger picture and kind of see how much this program has grown over the last Incredible. month, let alone the season, this last month. Um, and it basically all – you know, accumulated and, and, and blossomed during this Michigan game where you had a team um, in Michigan that had won three straight games and was feeling more confident yeah, in themselves and was feeling desperate, needing to win if winning a basketball game. And then you have this IU team on the road. They struggled and they're, you know, their last road game um, and previous to this, they're coming off you know, a big win over Rutgers and another even bigger win over Purdue back to back. <laughs> And, and Indiana like, didn't have this, to win this game. Come on. Yeah, Indiana doesn't have to win this game. I think was the, the mood going into it. It's just like, just play well. Yeah. And they attempt only four three-pointers all game. <laughs> I think it was six, wasn't it? Was it no, I think it was four. They intend, I think six. They attempted, two for six. They're two of six, all right. They missed four. They missed four. They, were, they attempted six three-pointers the entire game. <laughs> and roll out of Ann Arbor. It's going scoreless for the last three minutes, three minutes and still win that game on off of defense, off of toughness, off of well, Michigan not executing. But, you know, again, playing better than your opponent and winning that game. There's times in that game, Indiana was down. What were they down? 14? 11. 11 was the most seven in the second oh, half. 11. Yeah, right. Down, down double digits, down 11. Yep. Um, down seven in the second half, came all the way back in, in a lower scoring game and, and just clutched up. And that is a sign of a program that is gaining momentum. That is a sign of a program is beginning to believe in themselves. That's a sign of a team that is buying into what their coaches are saying. And, and I am extremely excited to see what happens in Evanston, uh, yeah. you know, on Wednesday, right around the corner. I, I'll tell you, I'll what well, you asked what what the ceiling is for this team when they're healthy. The answer to that question is a national championship, and yeah. I don't think that's too crazy of a comment to make. If you're talking about a team with Xavier Johnson back and Race Thompson back and Jordan Geronimo healthy, and you especially if you're talking about getting some additional contributions from your role players, which he did not get on Saturday, uh, Indiana the struggles are in the past. I mean. They are capable of cutting down the nets when it's all said and done. Now, there's a long way to go to get there. There's no question about it, but it's in the conversation. And, and the biggest reason for all of that is because you have Trace, Jackson, Giannis, Antetokounmpo, O'Neal playing your <laughs> center position for Indiana. I mean, he is doing five, six, seven different things. He's scoring, he's rebounding, he's distributing, he's blocking shots, he's leading the team, he's putting – the whole Hoosier squad on his back. And again, you know, it's not always, you know, it's, it's, you know, you know, a lot of people point out, like a lot of people point out the fact that he's not like always at his sharpest, but then you, you see the whole 40 minute product and it's another 28 minutes, 11 rebounds, three assists, two blocks, didn't foul 40 minutes. I mean, it's an unbelievable stretch of play. I'm not sure all of you have heard, but Jackson Davis became the first player in big 10 history to get four straight big 10 player of the week honors in a loaded league another incredible award another in incredible league with, piece with of recognition the national player of the year and there's the, not the, even a debate still i don't think there's a debate i think zach Eady is still your national player of the year you can have that conversation he's, he's getting closer you can have the conversation especially i think for big 10 player of the year but i look at trace and it's again you know it gives the team so much confidence knowing that every game they go in as long as they have Trace Jackson Davis, they have a chance of winning. And that's a pretty powerful pillar that you can lean on. It also helped Jalen Hitchafino found something in that game against Michigan after a couple of tough shooting games against Maryland, against Rutgers. Hitchafino was absolutely awesome. Indiana needed him against Michigan on Saturday. Michigan couldn't stop him. That was the biggest takeaway. I think, uh, you know, Matt, you and I watched the game. I think we said we wanted a third player to step up. We wanted a fourth player to step up. At the end of the day, Michigan really couldn't stop Indiana's Batman and no. Robin, and, and that is how die you get the win. I mean, Charlie, I'm going to ask you this, right? The turnaround has been so impressive for this IU team, but you've watched almost every game they've played this year in person. What's been the biggest difference 
from the product you saw at the start of the year, which had a, a couple of nice wins in there without question, including that one against North Carolina, to what you've seen over the last few weeks. Is there a major difference that you've seen in the roster as you watch these games that really stands out to you? I think it's um, I think it's Mike Woodson's trust in uh, in Jordan Geronimo, in uh, in CJ Gunn, um, in some of these players uh, stepping up. Uh, Trey Galloway, I think he's given a lot more responsibility to, and it's definitely paid off. I think in the beginning of the season, he was he wasn't hesitant to put in a different lineup, but he talks a lot about it in his press conferences about how. Over the summer, he had uh, specific groups running against each other. He made concrete lineups, a one team and a two team. Um, and that's what he was planning. That that was the game plan he was going to use going into the season. Um, and then, you know, hit some bumps along the way, lost uh, lost X, um, had to readjust, rewrite the script. Um, and I think that what we're seeing in the second half of the season um, with the maybe more unorthodox lineups, um, and the minutes being distributed in ways that we could not have predicted at the beginning of the year. Uh, I think that that's just, this is just a product of that. So. Makes total sense. I mean, the defense, you're seeing the complementary pieces, maybe they weren't all there offensively against Michigan, but you saw defensively Miller cop, Trey Galloway combining there on the last play of the game. Tamar Bates played hard defensively, even if that shot wasn't falling Malik renewed did the same thing as well. There's room for improvement, but you really like the effort and intensity they're playing with. Matt, you know, this was our podcast poll, in fact, for this week. It was the end of the day, which aspect of IU's turnaround has impressed you the most? For you, yep. Matt, is it Trace Jackson Davis, the team's defense, the improvement in coaching, or is it just the overall toughness that you're seeing in this group? I, I would say, look, I think the overall toughness um, has increased. Remember, um, Calling they were soft. Team they soft. Were so soft at the start of the year, but yeah, we did we, say they can improve on that. Look. Yep, 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 yep. But we did say that, you know, they and they were they were extremely soft to start the year. Um, I don't think anybody doubts that at all if you watch the team. Um, and there's been a significant increase in that. I I also think they're just executing better and they've learned how to play their roles. I would say that is probably the most important thing to this run. Again, I, I, I think the toughness was always there. There's just, I think a, a part of toughness that people don't understand is the mental side of it. Yeah. There's like the physical side where it's, you know, diving on the, for loose balls, it's hustling, right. You know, give, you know, giving every ounce mm -hmm. of energy, but there's a whole other part where it's like believing in your teammates, even yeah. when you're down, yeah. believing, believing in yourself to shoot the ball, um, knowing your role and, and not feeling like you, you need to play out of it. For instance, somebody that wasn't extremely mental tough against Michigan still ended up winning the game. So it didn't matter, but Tamar Bates had mm. just an absolute howler of the game, just did not play well. Every single time he touched the ball um, on offense, it was just he was either too rushed or um, didn't know what the play call was, or he felt like it was on him to absolutely make a play and you never want to really be playing a player like that, right? Like Who's pressing, playing right? out you of his yeah. out of his role. And then you had a guy like Biller Cop who absolutely played his role that game, Amazing. right? He, you know, and and played, by the way, I thought almost impeccable basketball outside yeah. of you know a couple of defensive possessions, but the, that's about as much as you can ask for. Yeah. Um, you had guys like Jordan Geronimo, who came in, they he look, he didn't have his best game in a Hoosier uniform, but he played his role, Just right? Ladies, he didn't do left things it on the floor exactly, and it's that kind of mental fortitude and, and being able to you know understand that hey, you know this is not my game, I'm not here to score, I got to give the ball to Jalen, got to give the ball to Trace, you know that's our best chance of winning, and and playing and giving it out for the team, that's mental toughness, that's what Rutgers does, right? Yeah. Rutgers doesn't care who scores nope. right the only thing they care about is is being able to make fun of you after they beat you okay and and there there is a there is something very respectable in that honestly there is you know as much as you, we love to hate them they give out everything edge. every ounce of energy and mental effort in order to win that basketball game so that they can have fun afterwards 
right? And the same thing goes can go for IU. And then what you've seen over the last couple of games is they're going to give every – outside of the, the Maryland game, they're going to give everything they possibly can to win the game. And they're going to play within themselves for the most part. And the staff is willing to see, hey, my players, Tamar Bates, is not playing – how he's supposed to be playing. Let's yank him, right? You had a player on the Michigan sideline and Terrence Williams who was not playing well, right? And everybody on Michigan who has watched Michigan basketball at all this year could tell you he has not been playing well. And Juwan Howard didn't yank him, right? They, he he played him for, you know, about 10 more minutes than he should have. Especially right? in the crunch Especially crunch at moments. the end of the game, right? In crunch time, he, he, he played him <clears throat> way too long. Yeah. way too long and so again you see the difference between the coaching staff you see how this team is developing into into roles and you see how they are growing and to become more mentally tough they're peaking at the right time they really are yeah it's been impressive to watch Tamari Bates will bounce back you know he will he's gonna find time might be Wednesday might be Saturday not sure when it's going to be but as we saw against Michigan State you know there's he, he is a knockdown shooter if you give him those looks you give him those chances He'll drain down. The shooting splits are pretty stark, home versus away. So maybe we look ahead to that Illinois game on Saturday and see that one as one where Tamar Bates helps the Hoosiers quite a bit. We asked all of you on our weekly podcast poll, what aspect of IU's turnaround has impressed you the most? You can cast your vote at the Hoosier Sound. We also retweeted it over on our Indiana HQ page. It's a tight race right now, folks. Your votes count here uh this poll will be live up until tip off against northwestern right now the leader is team toughness at 32 percent but trace jackson davis is 29 percent team defense at 27 the coaching option is picking up 12 percent right now it's a tight race so make sure you head over to our twitter poll at the hoosier sounder at indiana hq and cast your vote if not if you have not already i'm gonna lean trace jackson davis just because of how much of a dominant force that he's been i think it starts with him and he's even pointed out how he's picked it up he's been more of a leader here in this recent nine game stretch and you really do see that come through he's also been able to leverage his teammates as we've seen here um, especially after he scored 2,000 career points for indiana the good news is for indiana there are a lot of a lot of positive vibes right now and you're seeing team right now in second place as far as the Big Ten is concerned, they're 14th, as Charlie mentioned in the most recent AP poll. They're sitting at 19th in Ken Palm. You're seeing fourth seed, fifth seed conversation for IU in the NCAA tournament. Of course, they can continue to work their way up in that conversation. So overall, a lot of positive vibes for this program. We're going to dive into Northwestern and Michigan, excuse me, Northwestern, Illinois, coming up this week as the Hoosiers take on a couple of teams they faced before already this season. But first, it's time for who won the week this past week in IU sports. And once again, we continue to shout out the IU women's basketball team, who on Thursday night trounced the Iowa Hawkeyes in Assembly Hall, an absolutely outstanding environment, the largest crowd in IU women's basketball history, huge TV numbers on Big Ten Network. The Hoosiers won 87-78. It wasn't easy. You would never expect it to be easy, but IU nabbed a top five win. The Hoosiers are undefeated against ranked opponents. They've remained number two in the most recent AP poll, which matches an all-time program high. And IU now takes on Ohio State. Later tonight, as we record here on Monday night, it's a 7 p.m. tip-off, and you can find the Hoosiers and the Buckeyes on Big Ten Network. Indiana right now sits in first place in the Big Ten race, a game ahead of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Folks, a friendly reminder, if you'd like to subscribe to our podcast for free, all you have to do is search for The Hoosier Sound wherever you listen to podcasts. Stay up to date with all of our information by following us on Twitter at Indiana HQ and at The Hoosier Sound. If you enjoy our show, leave us a review. Tell a friend. Share our links. Your support really helps us grow this podcast and reach more passionate IU fans such as yourself, especially when the men's and women's basketball teams win every game that they play. All right, guys, Indiana heads to Northwestern on Wednesday night for 9 p.m. tip on Big Ten Network. The Wildcats are frisky, folks, and not only do you need to know that, they also have walked into Bloomington and recorded a head-to-head -head victory over Indiana this year, so there is no question that the Hoosiers will not take this Wildcats team lightly, especially after Northwestern dispatched number one Purdue 
on Sunday in Evanston at Welsh Ryan Arena in front of a sellout crowd. The Wildcats look very much on track to make their second NCAA tournament in program history. It's a six, seven man rotation, maybe eight. Boo Booey and Chase Audige are the guards you need to know. Lafayette, Indiana native Brooks Barnheiser has really picked it up as of late. Nicholson and Barron are a couple of the bigs that will be responsible in guarding Trace Jackson Davis. Charlie Northwestern plays a slow game. Their offense isn't great, but their defense is staunch. You saw them hold Purdue to just 57 points at the end of that game yesterday. Indiana's faced them before, and they've taken an L. What are one or two things you're paying attention to in this matchup that you want to see IU do as they try to knock off the Northwestern Wildcats for another road win? I think the most important thing, um, for IU uh, against against Purdue Northwestern um, still allowed Zach Eady to get 24 points um, even in a 57 point game that's a lot of points um, so I think that uh, attacking the paint uh, in more than one way is one of the things that I want to see IU do uh, that means not just funneling through TJD um, for 40 minutes that means um, getting the double on Trace and then uh, Using that to their advantage, having somebody cut in behind, maybe races or races out, right? Races it's out. day to day. We'll maybe. see. We haven't heard okay, we'll as far as races. Uh, if really. not, then uh, renews behind him. Somebody else is there that can uh, catch a bucket. Um, you know, just just another another outlet, another way to get into the paint. Um, I think if they attack the paint, that's the first thing, um, and figure out how to. The second thing, um, figure out how to slow, not slow down, but kind of play to Northwestern's offensive rhythm. Um, you talked about how they were a slow team, and I yeah. think that that's something that the Hoosiers are. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if the Hoosiers are the best at adapting um, right away at the beginning of a game, especially. Uh, so I think that that's something they need to get on early is figuring out um, how Northwestern plays. Uh, obviously, they've played them before, but they uh, IU's got this whole new defensive effort that they're kind of pushing out uh, on every team that they've played, and it's working for the most part. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how a team that IU hasn't played yet or ha has played yet, Northwestern, how this new defense kind of works on them. So I think that first, uh, finding a different way to score in the paint other than just Trace Jackson Davis, opening that up, getting maybe 40, 50, eight points would be huge for the Hoosiers yeah. um, early, get as quickly as possible. Um, and then also um, kind of playing the defense that they've been playing lately, high intensity, um, maybe bringing it down to the level that Northwestern's playing at kind of to translate it more easily. Mm -hmm. um, but really um, uh, playing with intensity and, you know, trying not to get caught up by Northwestern. Yeah. Makes total sense. Matt Northwestern dropped 84 on Indiana in that first matchup. The Wildcats have gone on a COVID break since then. The Wildcats have knocked off some really quality teams in this process since the Hoosiers last played them. And that's even before you get into the fact Indiana's made a big turnaround. It's interesting to see Bowie, Audige, and Ty Berry in the last matchup combined for 58 points. Indiana's guards have to be better in this one. What are your key matchups that you're looking forward to seeing in this game on Wednesday night as Northwestern tries to steal a tournament bid? Indiana tries to get a quad one win. Look, last time we played, Boo Bowie and Chase Audige got anything they wanted it was rough um it was rough and that's the reason why iu lost was guard play northwestern might have the best backcourt in the league i agree um they might I, I would argue that michigan state probably has a little bit better but that's only because of depth and not because of quality um they they definitely have two of the more quality guards in the league again it helps having seniors yeah. Right. It just does. They've been in your program forever and know the plays like the back of their hand and are familiar with each other and have so much chemistry it really does help. Um, and so you have these two guys playing at the height of their powers. How do you stop? Them? Well, the answer is you don't, you know, you know, I, Indiana doesn't really have an answer there. Um, you know, I, I believe Indiana was at about the same strength that they were right now you know as far as yeah, manpower goes yeah. i think trace is probably a little bit hobbled at the time if you remember 
Um, because I believe that was on the backs of him coming back from the back injury, which he definitely still was not back from the back injury. If you remember watching the Iowa game again, that was in that same stretch. Right. So again, trace is much better now. Um, and therefore should be more of a factor in this game. Um, I would say the matchup to look out for is this look, Northwestern plays a couple bigs, but I think their best one that they play is Nicholson. Can Trace impose his will on Nicholson and get him in foul trouble? Because if they can do that, then that makes Northwestern very uncomfortable. Then they have to play some bigs that are probably not accustomed to playing people like Trace Jackson Davis on a night-in, night-out basis. Um, and definitely are, are bad matchups um, for them uh, against Trace. And then the second thing is how do you slightly hamper the senior guards, right? They're at home. They're going to be comfortable. Um, you saw somebody like Chase Audish, whose jump shot is just the worst thing I've ever seen, get really comfortable against Purdue down the stretch and, and make Purdue's guards, you know, their life hell. Um, if there's ever a game for somebody like Xavier Johnson to come back and give you 10 minutes, this would be the game. Um, uh, we would really appreciate his minutes here. Um, but I think for me, it's, it's Jalen Hutchifino has to play his best defensive game of the year. Um, if Indiana wants to pull off, a, you know, a steal in the Welsh Ryan arena. Um, and the second thing that has to happen is that Miller cop has to have a, a nice warm homecoming, um, and hit a couple threes. Cause uh, Indiana's going to need the offense to keep up with Northwestern. I think, um, they're going to have to score on, on a team of Northwestern that defends pretty well. Um, and if they can do that, if Trace can take advantage of his matchup um, healthy, if Miller Cop can hit some threes, and again, Jalen Hutchfino can be focused on defense, I think Indiana has a shot. It's going to be tough, though. It is. It's going to be a tough game. In fact, Ken Palm right now is Indiana's an underdog going into this game Wednesday night. If you go and look at some of Northwestern's recent losses, and there haven't been too many of them, the consistent theme seems to be, okay, the star gets his – his contribution. So Northwestern lost to Michigan, Hunter Dickens, Northwestern lost to Michigan twice. Hunter Dickinson was, he brought it. Uh, Northwestern yep. lost to Iowa. Chris Murray brought it. Uh, the extra piece of this is in Northwestern's losses. You also see someone step up and knock down a bunch of shots from the perimeter. And for Rutgers, when they walked into Evanston and won, it was Cam Spencer. For Michigan, both of their wins, it was some combination of Kobe Bufkin and Doug McDaniel and Jet Howard. For Iowa, it was Peyton Sanford. This is exactly the kind of recipe you need in order to beat Northwest. You need Trace Jackson Davis to deliver. Okay, breaking news. And then you also need someone from Indiana to step up and hit some outside shots. And maybe that's Miller Cop. Maybe that's Jalen Hitchafino. Maybe that's Trey Galloway. Maybe CJ Gunn gets some run and hits a, a three in, in a few minutes. Whatever it takes, someone hitting some shots from the perimeter to help Indiana's cause here. For what it's worth, Northwestern has played a lot of games in a very short amount of time. Indiana could also get them coming off a very emotional high over their win over Purdue on Saturday. So there could be an opening here for Northwestern to maybe come out a little bit sloppy. Looking forward to seeing if Indiana can take advantage of that. Charlie, as I mentioned, Ken Palm has this one 70 to 69 in favor of Northwestern. It's going to be a good game between two of the hottest teams in the league. Who do you have winning this game on Wednesday night and by how much? I like taking the under underdog. That is, I'm going to go uh, Indiana, um, and I think the score is going to be. I think it's going to be a little bit higher than 70-69. I think we're going to see both teams kind of um, not get tired, uh, but I definitely think that it's been a long stretch for both of them, and that's going to show a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go 78-72 Indiana. No, oh, the Hoosiers keep their run going. Matt, same question to you. 70-69 Northwestern is the Ken Palm prediction. The Hoosiers, Wildcats Wednesday night. Who you got by how much? This is a tough one. Um, I've gone back and forth on this one. Um, so I think Nith I think I know where Nithin's going, so I'm not going to make it a, a, a sweep here. I'm going to say Indiana loses this game just because I think Northwestern's backcourt will have a good game. I'm o I am open to the argument that this could be a bit of a letdown for Northwestern. Again, I, I feel like they're a program that, you know, I, big wins don't come around a lot and teams that aren't used to, to winning 
struggle with yeah. winning, right? And they struggle with continuing that success. Yes, following it up. Uh, and I feel like this could be one of those games that Northwestern run into, but that also I feel like at the same time, it could just be me creating narratives in my head and I'm going crazy after I watched the Eagles get absolutely cheated out of the Super Bowl oh, last oh, night. Oh. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go on and say, I think Northwestern wins this 65-62 in a close game that the Hoosiers will ultimately look back on and say, we would have split the series if we had played nine percent better at home um and you just tip your cap to northwestern and say they're having one heck of the year and you move on man you know this is a tough matchup i think it's going to go right down to the wire i picked against indiana by the way against michigan i picked against indiana against purdue picked against indiana when they played hence uh ohio state I even I did I did say Indiana was going to win at Happy Valley. That did not happen. Um, I have Indiana winning this game on Wednesday night. I think IU right now has the vibes, and I'm going strictly off of that. Now, so does Northwestern, but we're talking about a game where I do think Northwestern is going to have a tough time following it up. Of course, a little bit of a wild card here is with this game at Welsh Ryan Arena. Weeknight, 9 o'clock, I almost would predict Indiana is going to have a majority of the fans in the building. For this game, which is normally the case, even uh, but that's usually when Northwestern is bad. Um, I think it's going to be a pro Hoosier crowd, and Northwestern's big. You know, at the end of the day, yes, they're able to win some of these games, but they really struggle at times offensively. And you're seeing this Northwestern team putting to putting up 63 to beat Purdue. They had put they put up 54 to beat Wisconsin. They struggled to get to 70 against good teams. Now they did it against Indiana. I think Mike Woodson's going to make sure that doesn't happen again on Wednesday night. So I've got Indiana coming out 68, 66 win. I would, uh, if Indiana gets plus money. Um, I would lean in that direction. Um, when the lines come out here at some point on Tuesday. So folks, that's where we're at. Indiana Northwestern Wednesday night should be a good one here. Two teams that, uh, two teams that are, are feeling themselves right now. So looking forward to seeing that real quick. We're going to shout out our socials all across Twitter, Instagram, you name it for us. You can find our accounts at Indiana HQ and at the Hoosier Sound on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Matt on Instagram and on Indiana HQ, but what are we? Indiana.HQ. And the follower numbers are going through the ceiling here. So folks, if you follow us, we really appreciate it. If you do, please tell a friend, please tell a neighbor, a stranger, someone at the grocery store. It really doesn't matter. Tell them to follow Indiana HQ and that'll meet all their hopes and dreams. If you don't follow us, make sure you jump on the bandwagon here because we're going to be your one-stop shop for IE Sports from now until the end of time. All right, Indiana, Illinois, Saturday, noon Eastern tip on ESPN. At Assembly Hall, Indiana will return home in this weird four road games in five stretch. This is the one of the five-game stretch that is at home. Illinois, good season. Indiana fans will remember the Hoosier stomping the Illini at State Farm Center. But Illinois is 17-7, and 8-5 and five in the league. Good non-conference wins. A decent conference record, as you can tell. It's interesting here is Illinois had a week off because of COVID. That was because Minnesota was unable to play the game against the Illini. Recently, the Illinois squad did knock off Rutgers 69-60 over the weekend in Champaign. Now, this matchup will be very different from the Northwestern matchup. Illinois plays fast. Illinois has got a great offense. Illinois is a team that will effectively play defense as well, but... It's a very different pace compared to the one you'll see Indiana play against Northwestern on Wednesday. Illinois is basically running a seven-man rotation out here. They take a lot of threes, but they struggle to make them. Uh, they're a good rebounding team. So as you look ahead to this matchup on Saturday, Charlie, there's a lot to pick from here. Indiana's real uh, inspirational win this season came at Illinois earlier this year. You know Illinois is going to be motivated to get revenge on Saturday. What are one or two things you're paying attention to for this matchup on Saturday? Um, a couple of things I'm paying attention to, kind of similar things um, to Northwestern, um, but it's just seeing how long IU can keep up uh, the defensive pressure mm. uh, that they've been putting on the backcourt. Um, because I think that after Northwestern, adjustments are going to have to be made um, because Illinois is a very different team. Um I think that one of the things that I'm going to be really paying attention to um, when I'm watching that game 
is how I use paint defense holds up. Um, just because it's just been, I don't know if it's been great this season. Uh, we've seen a lot of Trace Jackson Davis highlights down low, some big, uh, some big swats here and there. But at the end of the day, a lot of the points are scored in the paint. Um, and I think Illinois is going to exploit that. Uh, they're going to search for a way um, to tire out Trace Jackson Davis, which I'm shocked a lot of teams haven't been trying. Maybe they have been trying to do. Um, but honestly, it doesn't seem like it's a, it's a goal of teams to tire him out. He plays uh, 35 minutes and still uh, you know, gets back on defense running. Um, so I think that if I'm Illinois, that's what I'm doing. And as a fan, that's what I'm watching for. Um, but another thing that I think we need to pay attention to that I'm going to pay attention to um, is finding a way to secure and, uh, and kind of establish, I don't know if the word consistent works here, but some sort of reliable perimeter shot. I say this all the time, and I think every Indiana fan wants to hear it, but I think it's going to be really important against Illinois. Uh, I think that uh, when the Hoosiers get on, uh, you know, some kind of run, when they go on a run, it's hard to stop them. I think against Purdue, they were they went like a 15-2 and two run or something crazy, something – it was an absurd run. And I think that's how Indiana wins games. You could run a game plan. You could do this, that. You could say, oh, if we play more defense, that. you could say a lot of things. But when it comes down to it, it starts with a three, and it usually ends with a three. An Indiana basketball run is almost unstoppable. It's hard to predict, but if they can get the threes, if they can get the threes going, the energy is going to be you know, picked up a little bit. Intensity is going to rise. That's how they play well on defense is when they're motivated on offense. So I think those are two things I'm looking for. Go, oh, Matt. Illinois has only lost three games since the start of the calendar year. Uh, one of them was to Indiana, the other two at Northwestern and at Iowa. I mean, we're talking about a team that is feeling themselves once again. Indiana is not getting any breaks on the schedule. Trace Jackson Davis was not doubled against Illinois in the first game. Do you expect them to do that in this one? And if not, you know, or if so, who, who are one or two Hoosiers you think will have a big game on Saturday? I don't think they're going to double him again because I, I that's just um, Brad Underwood's defensive philosophy. They don't send doubles, right? They, they really just don't double in the post. Um, and they, they hope to get in on the guards and, and affect that pass before it reaches the post. Right. And so again, I would be surprised if there's a change because I, I think they should have changed it mid game at <laughs> Illinois. And if they're not going to change it mid game, I would just be surprised if they change too much of that strategy. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not expecting them to come out with the exact same playbook, right. For, right. for this game. But I would, I would assume that it's, that would not be amongst one of the changes. Um, so therefore, Again, I fully expect Trace to have another monster game. Because again, I don't think there's anybody on Illinois that can touch him. And Danger is going to get home. the re- first chance, right? Yeah, but there's no he, like there. The Illinois is so confusing. But besides that point, I, there's there's not anybody on Illinois. Coleman Hawkins can't hang with him. Danger can't hang with. There's not anybody in Illinois that, that's good enough in the post to hang. What I'm worried about is who on IU's perimeter, I'm about to sneeze, is going <laughs> to step up, right? Who is going to step up on, on IU's perimeter? I, you know, Charlie alluded to, you know, IU needing to make shots and, and IU's runs, you know, starting and ending with three-pointers and that being a huge part of Assembly Hall and the momentum and, and, and just the kill shots that IU lands on teams that they can't come back from. Who's going to be the guy that starts it in this game, right? Because is it is it going to be Miller Cop again, a guy that's I think improving every single game, game in and game out, even if he's not scoring? Is it going to be Tamar Bates, who we alluded to having a bad game against, um, you know, the the last game Michigan, against Michigan, yeah. right? And, and actually, kind of struggling over his last couple of games, right? Since that Michigan State game, yep. Maybe you know a, a big game at Assembly Hall is yeah. something that he he kind of gets up for. Um, is it uh, maybe Trey Galloway who's who's improved? And and I was looking at his synergy numbers today, and he's basically improved in every single statistical category. Um, and he's up to like 129 offense rating. By the way, fun fact: Miller Cop leads the entire Big Ten in offensive rating. Did you know that? 
Um, he is he is the league leader in offensive rating more than Edie. I think he's at 129 something. He wow. um is just by far and away the most efficient offensive player um in the league, according to the uh nerds. So um that is something to keep an eye on, an eye out for. And and again, can they show up in big games? I, I have a feeling that um, you know, again, this Northwestern game, I said it was gonna be a letdown. I, I have a feeling that if Indiana is to lose against Northwestern, I have no doubt in my mind that they are going to come out angry and playing with extreme focus and passion at home. And therefore I totally believe that Indiana will split this week. I think I'm team split split. um, the whole way this season, but I, I I do think (laughs) that, that they will split games with Northwestern and Illinois and, and continue the success at assembly hall. Yeah, it's not too surprising to approach it that way. Uh, as we've talked about before with Illinois, they're 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 a good basketball team, but their their weaknesses really are making threes and making free throws, which that's pretty tough to win in this day and age playing that way. But hey, shout out to Brad Underwood, he makes it work. Um, Taryn Shannon, Coleman Hawkins, all able to effectively score for the Illini. Matt Mayer allegedly was sick when Indiana played Illinois in the last game. Hopefully he doesn't uh, come down with another illness uh, for Brad Underwood to use as a crutch um, on Saturday. (laughs) Indiana, uh, again, you know, in a close game, you have to like the Hoosiers' chances just from the free throw line standpoint. If you remember in the game between Indiana and Illinois that took place back in January, Illinois had just a nightmare night from the free throw line, nine for 23 and the fact is they shoot 67% on the season. And, you know, if you put Dane Danger on the line quite a bit, well, it's going to help your cause. And as I talked about, you know, there are two things Indiana can really do in this game to win, and that is foul when necessary, put the Illini on the line. Don't give them two, don't give them a layup, give them, force them to hit two free throws. The other aspect of it is, of it is Trace Jackson Davis or even Malik Renu should never be posting up all that much. Illinois is a good post up defense. If Dane Danger is on the court, you want to be able to put the ball on the floor, drive past him, use that agility, uh, and that's your key to success there. Charlie, Ken Palm has Indiana winning this game 75-71. Who do you have winning this matchup and by how much? I have IU winning 80-71. to 71. I think they're going to pull away a little bit at the end. Um, but I do see IU coming out with the W. And assembly Hall changes it. I think when you're at Assembly Hall, it's a different game. I genuinely believe that. So, Yeah. That's uh, part of the mystique of that building, especially if the scoreboard starts uh, crumbling to pieces. Uh, Matt, uh, you said Indiana's going to win. Uh, what's your uh, prediction as far as the score line here? If you see Indiana about like a four point favorite in this one, yeah, I think four point favorite. That sounds about right. I think it'll be close. Um, you know, again, I think uh, people are are not talking about how mad Coach Underwood's going to make this Illinois team that they <laughs> lost to this team. So they will come out with a bit of fire. Um, I think it'll be actually more of a high scoring game. I think it'd be probably 80 76. I think the Hoosiers will probably have to score 80 plus to win this game. And that includes, um, I'll do a secondary prediction. I think Trace will probably put up 35 or 40 in this nice. game. I'd be very surprised um, if that's not the case. Um, and the Hoosiers somehow get a dub. He's going to have to carry the load of the scoring. And I think he's going to have, again, they're not going to be doubling him in my opinion. So he's going to have to take advantage of those one-on-one matchups that he he has that that are in his favor. So um, again, I I think Indiana wins this game and I think they'll win it in a pretty much a classic for, for what will be Trace Jackson Davis's career at AU. Classic. That's what I love to hear. I also have Indiana winning this game. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be more low scoring, I think, uh, I think both teams might struggle to hit some shots here. We've talked about it. Illinois has a tough time making threes, making free throws. Um, I think Indiana wins this one. I think it's going to be a little more low scoring. I have Indiana taking this one 67 to 64 in Assembly Hall on Saturday. It should be a good game. I'm looking forward to seeing Indiana grab two wins this week. It's the first time in a while I've ended, I've ended Indiana taking uh, both games in a week. So we'll see what IU does. Uh, Illinois, by the way, folks, they play at Penn State on Tuesday night if you're looking for something to watch. That's an ESPNU matchup. Illinois is a a two-and-a-half-point favorite going into that contest. All right, guys, let's wrap it up here on this Monday night. Charlie, what are your closing thoughts here? we got a lot that we talked about today. Indiana continues their run. 
in the men's game, the women's game too. Indiana is basically a basketball powerhouse at this point. Um, yeah, just a closing thought. Um, I you, uh, I use men's team, and men's team has um, has done a lot of great things over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, being able to live up to the standard that they've just set for themselves is going to be difficult, um, which is always the danger in becoming a powerhouse. Uh, so I think that it's going to be a struggle for IU, even though I, I put, you know, I think they're going to win both games. That's what I said. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult um, than the scores that they've been putting out recently have made it seem. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, moving forward, IUS uh, not even maintain, you know, cooler heads prevail. I don't think that's a strategy they need to use here. I think they need to come out on fire like they have been. Um, they need to hype themselves up about every every single game needs to be a battle because the Big Ten is still finishing as the one seed is obviously a great goal to have. Um, and it's still very doable. It is. Um, so it's in reach. It's in reach. I'm just going to put it out there. It's it in is. reach. It's something that and Mike Woodson has been alluding to for a couple of weeks. Yeah. He knows that that Big Ten championship out there. Um, and I think this Indiana team, you know, given the right circumstances, the right environment, the right attitude, um, has what it takes to get to where they want to go. So there you go. Matt, how about you? Lots to digest, lots to talk about. What are your final thoughts here on this Monday night? I'm going to take a different angle. I think we talked enough about the men's team. I'm going to talk about the women's team because I, I do really feel like they deserve an, almost an entire podcast <laughs> on their own. Um, I mean, Mackenzie Holmes, the GOAT, Grace Berger, um, the uh, queen from Italy, Yarden Garzon. Yarden, Yarden no, Garzon. No, no, from not Italy, Israel. I just looked at a flag on <laughs> FIFA Street. Like, a country that comes Israel. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, this team is amazing. Sydney Parish, of course. Yeah. Like, I would go on and name everybody on the roster, but they're sure. they're all playing so 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 well right now, um, really. And the, again, it's the number two in the country. Some people are arguing they could possibly be number one, yes. um, you know, and that's in the face of an amazing South Carolina team. Um, you know, I have IU fans going to bat for Mackenzie Holmes for play, National Player of the Year. Uh, really really special women's team and again they have a humongous game coming up um very soon at iowa reminds me of shades of that 2016 indiana team men's team that won the big 10 tournament at iowa against iowa in a race against iowa like they had to win that game um in a big game at, at carver so um, I'm super excited to see, you know, where they go and how their season unfolds. And I fully expect that this team, you know, with the toughness that they have and the players that they have and, and the togetherness that they play with, I fully expect this team to be in a final four, which is banner worthy in itself for a women's program that hasn't, by the way, hasn't won a big 10 title since the inception of the women's team in 1983. So it's been quite a while since the women's team's been on top um, and they've actually just never been in the position they have been in. Um, you know, so when you talk about Indiana being a basketball school, they're much more than just the men's program. Uh, the women's program is definitely looking like one of the best, um, not only just in the con, like not only just in the conference, but in the country. Um, and they're looking like they can possibly continue the success long term they're getting recruits you know things are moving in the right direction for the program um literally everything is is coming up uh you know 100 dollars bills uh 100 for the the women's program so shout out terry morin and her staff and everybody that's been involved with that absolutely it's, it was amazing to watch that entire game on thursday night every time i tune into an iu women's basketball game which is frequently it's always worth it that's what I've noticed. I don't know. How it's great. It's a great it's viewing worth, experience. It's always worth it. It's aesthetically pleasing. They play hard. They move. I mean, if you haven't yet, again, every game here on out in the regular season is televised. Big Ten tournament televised. NCAA tournament televised. So you have no excuse. Um, for me, it's the final thought is like a combination of both. And and right now, because like Super Bowl's done and March is around the corner, you're going to hear some national nuts be like, oh, all right, I guess I'll tune, on, tune into college basketball now. Like regular season – 
college basketball is the most underrated regular season there is out there. For some reason, everyone dismisses the regular season before the Big Ten, the conference term, before the NCAA term. Like it's some sort of boring, like it's some sort of boring exercise. But like the the games Indiana has played for both men's and women's basketball over the last handful of weeks, every single one has been played in a big environment with close and the teams are awesome. And even though Indiana wins most of them, it's not because their opponents are terrible by any means. And the Hoosiers are going out here in these Big Ten environments, these Big Ten games. And, I mean, that matchup on Saturday when Indiana won at Michigan in the men's game, I mean, I'm sitting here and my heart's racing and I see all of you on social media responding to us and mentioning us and talking to us about how the game's going. And I know you're on the edge of your seat. So for all the losers that wait till March Madness to tune into college basketball, you're really missing out on some pretty awesome product over the last uh, few weeks, not only in the Big Ten, but across um, Power Five, the high majors, the mid majors, really. I saw Southern Miss had like a sellout crowd in the game they were at last week. I mean, it's awesome to see college basketball thriving more than ever before but folks that about wraps it up for our 284th show of the hoosier sound thank you so much for joining us we really appreciate your support to hear more fantastic episodes like the one you heard today be sure to follow us at indiana hq or at the hoosier sound like our stuff subscribe to our page that way you don't miss out on any episodes in the future you can also go to our website indianahq.com to find it all in one place but as always Thank you for listening, Hoosier Nation, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love, go Hoosiers.